Mitch McConnell um, faces a dilemma. Now, I don't really think it's a dilemma because the answer is obvious if you care about the country at all. Um, but he thinks he's facing a dilemma. And that dilemma is what are Republicans going to do when there's basically this procedure, which is ceremonial, which verifies the election results. And you have the Republican president who's denying the results of the election. And you have a large portion of the base that's denying the results of the election. And you have a bunch of Republicans who are afraid if they don't deny the results of the election, that their political careers are over. So how does Mitch handle this? Well, let's take a look. So we have, um, this is from Politico, this quote. McConnell told senators on a recent conference call that this is a very difficult decision for each one of you. You each have to make it yourselves, recounted Senator Kevin Kramer. I voted twice on declarations of war. And he said, this is right up there. But there's a lot of noise out there and I won't judge anybody for their decision. So what he's saying is, hey, if you want to like casually vote on the side of overthrowing the democratic will of the people, who am I to judge you? That's his argument. That's his argument. His argument is, hey, if you want to symbolically put your middle finger up to the United States of America, a country that's supposed to be a constitutional republic and a representative democracy, I get it. This is a hard decision. This is just like, this is just as hard as it's been to vote on the wars that I voted on. By the way, that really does put it in perspective too, doesn't it? Because like all the wars that have been voted on since Mitch McConnell has been in Washington, D.C., every one of them you easily vote no on. You know? Like, I get it. There was propaganda at the time, and so people were, were overwhelmed, but, I mean, if you actually were a critical thinker and you looked at the evidence, you'd be like, we're not going to do an illegal and offensive war against a country that didn't attack us, like the Iraq War, for example. So those, like, the decisions in those votes, yes, they were very consequential, very important decisions, but, like, if you're a reasonable person with a conscience, you go, oh, of course I'm voting no on this. To him, it's like, oh, this is really hard. And I'm sure he voted for every one of those wars. Um, but he's acting like this is a tough decision. This is not a tough decision in so far as you actually care about the United States of America and the fact that we're a constitutional republic and a representative democracy. We have an election. The election, 306 electoral votes went to Joe Biden. That's already been verified by the Electoral College. When it comes to the popular vote, Biden won by over 7 million votes. This isn't tough. This isn't tough. And then even if you think, no, seriously, I think there was some funny stuff going on. Okay, well, how do you address that grievance? Very simply, you go to the courts. And what happened? They went to the courts. And when they went to the courts, the court said, yeah, we took a look at everything that you're claiming and there's nothing here or certainly not enough to overcome the election. See, that's the point that I get is so baffling to me, which is like, even if I grant you a lot of the points that the people who think this is a fraudulent election, even if I grant you a lot of your points, Biden still wins because there's not nearly enough of a problem. There's not nearly enough fraud to overthrow three or four states. It's not there. So there, even if I grant you stuff, you still lose. Trump still loses. There's no real issue here. So the fact that, I mean, this is, you can't, you can't vote against certifying the results and also pretend to care about democracy. If you vote against the results, you're saying, I'm an authoritarian. That's what you're saying. So Ted Cruz, Hawley, however these people react, Gomert in the House, if they react like they tell us they're going to react, okay, they're authoritarians. It's That's like the definition of it. I'll override the will of the people because this con man is pretending like he won. And I have political aspirations in the future. So, now again, this is symbolic, but I think it says a lot when, if you're willing to take a stand on this, to side with Trump over like the way our country functions, man, that's dark. That's dark. And the other funny point of, about this is, McConnell demands ideological consistency and purity from people in his caucus. He does. That's what he does. That's why the Republicans are always, almost always voting as a block on stuff. 
the one time that he's allowing people to like follow their conscience and do whatever you want is when the question is, should we override the democratic will of the people? Should we override an election that's been decided? It's the only time he's like, follow your conscience, bro. Every other issue, he's demanding ideological purity uh, to vote with corporations and vote with far-right interests. Every other vote, this is what McConnell demands. With this one, he's like, follow your heart. Incredible, man. Incredible. Really gross. And these people are exactly who we thought they were.